This is also an opening that we practiced once, at least today. We played this Vienna with G3, like on Draken. Um, sometimes people approach this one by just very, very quickly playing for D5 as well, because they'll have played on Knight C3, Knight F6 is the most common response, and then on G3, this is like a main line um, as well for what Andraken's doing. I mean, for what for what Adibon's doing. Andraken played Knight C6 on this move, um, which all just has to do with, you know, whether he was afraid of F4 or Bishop C4 or G3 or what, what move order he thought Andraken, uh, he thought that Adibon was going to do. So now Adibon goes for G3, and Andraken says, okay, let's just play this old symmetrical thing. How bad is it going to be for me? And Adibon gets in the first move, F4. So this is like super, super important for this kind of symmetrical structure. Um, it's like you need, it's like you want to be the first person to gain the F file initiative. So at this point, it still looks plausible, both what Andreykin's doing, that he can hold the balance like this, and plausible that Adibon could still be trying to play for some kind of an advantage here for white. Um, he's super stopped d5 from black. He's played f5, f4 comfortably with no huge drawback. And, um, and now he seems to get some pressure on, you know, e5 and the f file possibly. So my thought would be that if black wants to equalize, the key move would be f5. That would be my thought here. Um, so my instinct would be to play f5 for black. And see if we can't, you know, match white's pressure here, hold the line, just trade things when they come up, when, when, when white um, tries to come forward. Um... So let's just develop a piece for white. There's a million different pawn trades possible, some different structures, but nothing too impressive to me as I scan the position. So knight f3, I'm still feeling like if somebody just trades and brings the other person's pieces into the center, it's probably not that impressive for them. Even if they follow up with, with d5, I wouldn't expect that this outweighs having brought white's pieces to good squares. So that's the same reason why in this position here, um, I played knight f3 instead of playing like f e5, knight takes e5, d is playable as well, possibly, and then d4. I'm just not impressed in general with you know bringing my opponent's piece out like this. Um, it might be playable, but I don't know. No, I guess knight f3, knight f6. And I'm not pumped about pushing e5 so early. I'm not pumped about pushing d5 so early. So basically, I'm just not impressed with what I've done here as white. And, you know, if I trade on f5 myself, then I, I don't have anything for white in this position. So, you know, I'd have to do something riskier here. Yeah, e5 is definitely terrible now that, you know, if we actually look at it concretely. Is definitely a, a super bad move for white. Uh, we could look at d5 too, but I promise you it's bad. So let's just go on and we'll go with my instinct to playing knight f3 and see what black does next here. I don't really want to play fe4 for black, but the question is now, do I have a choice? Can I keep playing like knight e7 or knight f6 for black here and developing the black pieces? If I play knight f6, I'm potentially accepting a, a hurt pawn structure here, right? Where white can take. And however I take, I have to get this weak e5 pawn and let white keep going from here. Um, which has a certain, a certain risk to it. Um, so... Maybe the right way to play is just to put the knight on e7 here.
Does this give off any obvious advantage to white? Not really. I mean, the knight's more passive here than this one, but it also doesn't block the bishop. So it's not without its own advantage as well. Um, so, so knight e7 looks like a plausible way to keep defending here for black. To keep, you know, developing slash defending white's, white's pressure, aiming for a good position, hopefully. So fe5 is looking like even more toothless for white now, right? When black can just recapture the piece. Um, like d4 takes, bishop takes. Should be pretty close to equal. Um, I mean, it's playable. It's not like bad, actually. We could consider it. Bishop f3 castles. Whoa. The scary knight to g5. I don't know on which move you mean. Bishop f3, castles, castles, takes, knight takes, and maybe just play like this. Yeah, it just looks like it should be pretty close to equal still. So maybe we should keep these asymmetrical knights and keep developing and seeing if we can build up any other pressure. Let's try castling, castling, and bishop e3 maybe? Develop another piece? Nope, not that. All right, bishop e3. I mean, this is all like a playable game, but I don't feel like it's got the most, the most pressure. I feel like, you know, I'm not saying it's like unplayable for white, but it feels like in all these scenarios I'm looking at, these four pawns get traded off and you get a symmetrical pawn structure. And that symmetrical pawn structure to me slightly decreases the chances of outplaying your opponent here. Bishop to b3. Um, I have no idea how anyone could play bishop to b3 here. Maybe check your coordinates. Um... Bishop b3 would be over here. So, I mean, this is playable, but the thing is, like, not only can white not initiate anything spectacular, but it seems like at some point black will reach a point where they can trade and, and trade and, you know, just sort of, like, reach a pretty equal position. So, I don't know how thrilling this opening works out if black plays the immediate f5. Um, yeah, yeah, I don't see, I don't see a way for white to take advantage of this, of this structure to get a great advantage out of the game or even anything that I can notice, <laughs> you know, even any advantage that I can notice. So in the game. Black answers f4 with knight g7 instead of f5. White plays knight f3. So according to what I was saying, black could still play f5 and transpose to the position that I like. But after knight f3, black plays knight d4. White castles. Black plays bishop g4. So they're getting some trades. But like I wouldn't be pumped about trading these bishops if I were black. Nor would I be pumped about trading these knights if I were black. No, what I would be wanting to do is counter the potential for white to open the f file at some point. So I feel like I got to play f5. So I don't even like knight d4 at all. Okay, Baskaran just d4. 
develops. In some case, he might want to take with the bishop and play knight e2. c5. Okay, so now this knight is like here to stay. Just moves his queen out of the way. Now we'd expect everything to trade here, but black doesn't. Black just castles. Okay. I guess, I mean, trading everything is kind of like, why did we play c5, right? Like, black just spent all this time and energy trading off these pieces, and now we'll probably suffer on the f file. I think it try and like counter one last time with f5, but now they're stuck with a bad bishop. I'm not, I'm going to say this is going to end up probably bad for black, even with the f5 counter here. It's like a wasted move and a stuck bishop um, is just not, it's just not promising. You know, and white has this move here in particular, which could have some ideas. Like if you take here, bishop to g5 might get white to d5 square for the knight, right? So then alternately, you could play here. Now, again, there's the possibility of maybe bishop g5 going for knight d5. Um, as well as e takes f5 as a threat. So, yeah, this is bad for black. Like You could play this to avoid knight d5 at least. But then, what are you doing here? The rook's attacked. Castle, maybe. You know, queen b3 check, wins the pawn on b7. Um, pawn takes f5, destroys your kingside pawn structure because the knight can't take back. And, you know, who knows? For all for all that, rook f1 might be even better than either of those tactical moves, just building, building the strength and pressure. And as Richard was saying, you know, in addition to bishop g5 here, white also has the move bishop h6 on their horizon. So black has to also you know, evacuate the king over to the queen side here and hope that this position is okay. I think it might actually be okay for black to castle the queen side. That's why on second thought, I, I thought bishop g5 would be even stronger. Just the direct knight d5 seems to force some immediate concessions out of black on either d5 or f5 just by threatening the knight and going after black's light squares. So, yeah, definitely having played this like c5 thing, it doesn't make sense to trade off. But if you don't trade off, why did you do this? I mean, you could also just trade the bishop and keep the knight. So you've really, really, really super controlled d4 for black. But now you're facing, like, the bishop pair and the light squared bishop that will eventually... Sorry, ye old mouse lips. Eventually, at some point, whether or not it's on this move, the bishop's going to seize an open diagonal. It's not going to be blocked by the e4 pawn forever. And, you know, this bishop's not amazing. We traded the bishop that was the better bishop. There's no reason black should have equality here. They should definitely be worse. So black just castled, and now knight h4 is played. So now, I think here it's definitively too late for black to play f5, because their bishop would be trapped-ish by h3. There's also the possibility of ef5, bishop takes b7, maybe winning a pawn. Um... So I think now it's like too late for black. And white's threatening to play f5 themselves, actually. Like, if you play rook to b8, going for, like, a queenside kind of plan, white can play f5, takes, h3, you know, and start forcing the play over on the king side. Maybe black can still survive that with f6, actually. That's actually a good move. I didn't properly take that into account. Well... Maybe, maybe simpler would be h3 first, just sending the bishop back now that it came to g4, and then g4 looking to just play f5 very safely. Um, with sort of a clear advantage for white. Um, Andraken made a similar concession in the game. He just took on f4, bishop f4. And you see um, Adiban just puts his rooks on the f-file. Right, he's the first one with an open file. 
Since this diagonal is open, he trades off that bishop. Since that long diagonal is open, he trades off the bishop, weakens the f6 square, and develops his rooks on the f file. You know, and he's got like a clear, clear advantage, easy, easy game for him, which he eventually converted. Um, so basically, the early f4 has this is kind of like the eventual plan of the early f4. It's to be the one who has control over a useful file with the rooks. Black also has a semi-open file when there's this kind of pawn trade, but you'll see that white's pawn on e4 is not the kind of target that black's pawn on f6 or weak square on f6 or pawn on f7 are. So white has the doubled rooks, more space for the rooks, he's got rook transfers for the rooks, and black just doesn't have the same kind of activity for either of his rooks, and that's the basis of white's advantage. And that's strategically what white's playing for from the beginning by playing like early f4, and I think you need to counter it with the uh, symmetrical structure. It's my instinct. I mean, if this opening became more deeply analyzed and practiced by lots of top GMs, you would see refinements and developments beyond that, I'm sure. But um, at first pass, that's what seems logical to me for this particular opening. Yes, it becomes very much like a closed Sicilian. Um, it's also a kind of like closed English type of opening sometimes get similar structures. Um, you know, the players could have their pawns on c4 and c5 instead of c2 and c7, or one of the players could have played c4 or c5. Um, but it's the player who first gets this kind of activity for his rooks who is going to have an advantageous position. And at this point, it's like very clear that it will be Adibon who will have um, the pressure for his rooks and will have the opening advantage. So I think on Draken's handling of this opening is actually quite poor this game i mean first of all not recognizing to play f5 and then secondly coming up with this plan where he like spends time on knight d4 bishop g4 c5 like i feel like all it's tending towards is trading a piece that he doesn't want to trade right um and spending lots of time controlling one square that he already controls so i'm like pretty unimpressed with how he did it and i think it's pretty obvious that that adi bond had a nice advantage out of this game from the beginning and you know well, he also had like a winning tactic by move 20, which to me is also no surprise for this one. So, um, 